I'm here to oppose the motion that says climate change bring uh, poses serious challenge to the education sectors. The question is, what's climate change? Climate change refers to long, uh, long shift in the temperature and weather patterns. To pause. To pause refers to bring what is education sector. Education sector refers to the, uh, uh, it refers to the institution of higher education level. My brother from the other side has said that, that climate, uh, he's talked about corona, uh, col, uh, corona. I have a question for you. Does, cor does cor uh, corona bring, uh, does climate change brings corona? Uh, on to my first point, climate change has been there since immemorial. But what is important is how to cap it. They say that, they say that a drowning man clutches a straw. Yes, I'm talking about implementing climate change education program. Imparting knowledge is very important in, in this case. Let us educate our students about climate change. And not only that, how, but we educate them of how to cap it beside knowledge is power. My, and to my second point, climate change does not, pos, does not bring a serious challenge to the education sector, rather it favors the education sector. The question is how? Uh, let's say for example, when it rains, there will be a lot of water for production. Hence, the school, uh, hence there will be more production and to be serious, how can, will, how, who doesn't want to have a, a plenty of food in the school? I think everyone wants a plenty food in the school. So consequently, the school will, will require less amount of money on buying food for the school. That fostering partnership, they say that one, one finger cannot kill a lies. It's true. This is been shown by the coming of Mazingira Alliance into our school. They are fostering a relationship between the government and non-governmental. They come together, they foster that partnership so as to assist education sectors. Hence, the education sectors will not have to suffer a lot. To my fourth point, my brother from the other side has said that it leads to it leads to destruction of infrastructures. It is true. But when we have building climate resilient school and infrastructures, when we have a strong roofs in our school, I would not like to arrest my points, rather to rest my case. Thank you. Okay. L let's have the second uh, proposal. If, if the audience can write any questions, any queries you have, we will address them. Respected judges, my fellow opponent, and all other protocol observed, good morning. My name is Khalid Mohamed Ismail from Buruburu Buru Boys Secondary School. Here, ready to propose the motion which says that climate change poses serious challenges to the education sector. It is true that climate change poses serious challenges in our life, more especially in the education sector. Allow me to explore some of these challenges in more details. To the first point, brings in quality of education among the students. As we all know that climate change has caused many adversity around the globe. This phenomenon has resulted in extreme weather-related disease, which further exists in the gap in the education where vulnerable household and excluded population face severe challenges in granting access to education for their children. More consequence of such events, several education have been disturbed, which further delays the student to assess education. Secondly, increased irregular school attendance by the learners. Well, this is affected in this way. During drought, there is poor harvesting, which leads to shortage of, shortage of food, where most agricultural laborers are not getting proper employment to pay school fees for their children since they are not earning and cannot afford to pay that certain amount of money due to lack of resource mobilization and financial crisis in their work. Thus, prevent the student to attend school regularly. So I want to conclude my argument by saying that climate change is a problem that directly affects our life and student education. Therefore, if it's not proactively handle its effect, its effect may become irreversible and catastrophic to humanity. Thank you. Let's have the second opposer to the motion. Claim 
Climate change is not a problem of the future. It is here with us now. So the only thing we can do is find ways and means and uh, measures to overcome it. My name is Abiba Ali. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to oppose the motion that says climate change poses a serious challenge on the education sector. Before I proceed with my points, I would like to uh, oppose a point that my brother from the other side said. He said that uh, climate has a, has a direct impact on the education sector. No, it does not. There are many other challenging issues like inadequate funding. We have uh, an, equal access, uh, an equal access to quality education for all. So many other challenging issues. On to my first point. Uh, we should practice. We should practice climate friendly. We should climate. We should practice climate friendly gardening, whereby we minimize the use of. Uh, we minimize the use of buying synthetic fertilizers. There should be. We should buy the local. We should buy the locally. We should buy the locally grown plants, and uh, the locally the locally grown plants and the locally gardening produce instead of buying the fertilizers. These fertilizers they produce a lot of. Uh, they produce a powerful gas emission. So instead we should buy the we should buy the locally grown plants and also grow up. We grow plants on our school for a conducive environment to avoid the air conditioning use. We should advocate for deforestation. Deforestation is the plant, is the cutting down of trees. Instead, we should go for restoration of trees. We should, uh, we should do activities that uh, make, make us restore for trees. Like in our school, we have a policy whereby no visitor leaves our school without planting a tree. So you see, it helps in uh, providing a conducive environment. We should reduce our carbon footprints. Actions like uh, using public transportation Walking, these actions they reduce in carb they they reduce the carbon footprints. We could take steps to reduce our energy consumptions, like uh, switching off the lights when they are not in use. The staff and the students they could switch off the lights. They should try as much as possible to use the natural lights instead of using the 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 lights. We can work to support policies that practice environmental production, protection, such as advocating for renewable energy initiatives, like the solar wind. Also promoting sustainable food systems, like involving, uh, we should avoid the food waste and the, and so we should also try to source our food locally. This is going to avoid the greenhouse emission of gases, and also it is going to provide a healthier, and more sustainable eating habits among the school community. All protocol observe. Good morning. My name is Abdimajid Ibrahim Ali from Buruburu Boys in front of your standing family to propose the motion that says climate change poses serious challenges to the education sector. And climate change is a global uh, issue that affect, and it is very that affect our life in every, every every aspect of our life. And it's something that is very tangible, and we can use with our naked eyes and to see, and we can use our intellect to understand if we are rational. And there are many impact and uh, challenges that it brings to the education sector. Hence, it hinders it. It is effect. One of it is scarcity of water or shortage of water. Due to long, prolonged drought for long period, water sometimes becomes scarce or insufficient and inadequate. And whenever water becomes inadequate at any given uh, learning center like school, levels of hygiene are compromised where Teachers and learners are put at risk and jeopardize their life. Hence, now this disease like a cholera and typhoid. When now some students miss lesson and some teachers miss attending classes, as they in home for the sickness or at the hospital treated. Hence, now there is no running of that education. My second point is climate change is a root to sexual violence. Majorly or especially at the village level, 
where all families or the schools are not uh, well, uh, financially they are not stable. Many girls travel long distance or walk long distance to fetch water from like, some water point like dams. And on their way under no protection, they are likely to meet some hungry predators or hunters that consider them as their prey. And on their way now, they may abuse sexually, and that brings pregnancy. As a result of their pregnancy now, as a result of their pregnancy, the dignity and the modesty of this lady in the sight of the society she lived, now it degraded. And out of due to shamefulness that she don't want to show her face to others, she now forced herself to drop out from school now, decreasing that one, the number of school going students. Also, climate change causes emotional and psychological impact. Climate change can induce to anxiety, depression, and echo grief among the students. And the looming threat of extreme weather, like uh, habitat destruction, can also affect the mental of the school going student. Thank you. have the final opposer uh, when the bell rings and uh, you are about to finish just finish your point yes Thank you so much all for giving me this golden opportunity to strongly oppose the motion that says climate change poses serious challenges to the education sector My name is Azmina Abdulaziz from Moi Girls Without wasting time onto my first point roof and wall painting this potential reduction of temperature when we paint our roofs and walls white, as we know the color white reflects the light. So when the schools goes to use the method of painting the roofs and the walls white, there's a recorded average classroom temperature of 3.71 reduction. So there are many other areas that have used this method and they have turned out to be successful. Examples are Dar es Salaam and Portugal. On to my second point, wearing the right attire. Yeah, climate change brings problems to the education sector, but it's not that much serious that we just have to forgo the education. No, if we wear the right attire, as for us, we are wearing white, as I said before, where white reflects the light. So when the students wear white, that means that they will not be attacked from the direct radiation of the sun. Even when this cold, on cold weather, we can wear black because black absorbs heat. And the students will remain to be warm and then have a conducive environment to study in. On to my third point, internal insulation. We should be introduced to a low cost of natural insulation like the splint bamboos, ceiling boards, and on the underside roofs. Yeah, there's sometimes climate change brings heavy rains, and that heavy rains bring noise to the roof without the splint bamboos. The students will get distracted. But if we use the internal insulation, like I said, the splint bamboos and the ceiling boards, then the noise reduction will be few, and then the students can have a conducive environment to study in. On to my third point, diseases. I've seen, okay, all of us have seen a place whereby last year, or 2020, we stayed out from school for more than one year because of disease. But have you ever seen students staying away from school because of climate change for even more than one month? No, you haven't. Okay, thank you. My fourth point is planting the right type of trees. In our school or many other schools, it is advisable to plant many trees in front and behind the classes. When it is hot on hot weather, the students can go and use the shade of the trees to study in so that will not interfere with their education. If they don't want to go outside, it's okay. The classes that we have are surrounded by the trees, will, the trees will bring proper ventilation and the students will have a cool environment to study in. Thank you so much. Those are my points. So are you, are you ready for the closing remarks? So let, let us have the proposals to the motion make their closing remarks. Buru, buru.
Okay, th thank you once again. Uh, before I finalize and give the summary of this one, it, if I add one point, um, using schools as emergency shelters uh, also hinders education as uh, an impact of a climate change. How? Whenever a certain locality or a certain village level is affected by a, a natural uh, disasters, they flock into another a neighboring uh, village. And uh, we are not, we as we know, we are developing countries that we are not uh, all well developed. And these guys, when they come as a refugee, they don't get well prepared. So they flock into some schooling centers. So, and we cannot teach and go, our, our learning cannot be going on when these guys are there until they go back, their education is still affected. As we know that the reality and uh, the one who has eyes does not told to see something. And if you close your eyes and uh, nobody will help you to see the sun. This climate change is a global issue that everybody understands and sees. And uh, if the worst part, it affects the education. And if a society living in a given locality, it is education is affected, then that means it does not have a brighter future. So now education being the most treasury and the valuable thing to human life, and uh, to our future pride, to our bright future, then we should prevent some of the challenges and the impact that it may have, so that in tomorrow or in the in our life or the generation that will come, uh, they live simply and resilient life. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's let's have the closing remarks. Um, I'm here to put our point in nutshells and summary form. Firstly, practicing retrofit interventions. Retrofit, uh, retrofit profit interventions, for example, by uh, by practicing of uh, renewable energy sources. Especially, okay. Secondly, by first uh, building climate resilient schools, reducing greenhouse emission, implementing climate change education program, taking steps to reduce our energy consumption, especially when when you are not using uh, when you are losing the taps. Uh, let's say the school in infrastructure such as the tap you turn off. Uh, the same applies to the electricity appliances. When you are not using the light, you turn off the light in order to conserve it. Uh, fourthly, supporting policies that. Uh, that, uh, that prioritize environmental protection and sustainability. Fifthly, promoting sustainable food sy uh, systems. And then we have internal solution in which, uh, in order, for example, planting trees in front or behind classes in order to combat hot environment. Also, roofs and wall painting and wi wearing the right attires. This involves when it's called we wear the Cold, we wear the uh, we wear attires like sweaters in order to combat the cold. This will enable one to study in a good environment. And when it is hot, we reduce the, the number of we wear the light clothes. Uh, all this, therefore, climate change does not pose serious challenge to the education sectors. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was our first session. We thank the debaters for bringing out their points. As Alia stated, uh, this is not only a competition, but the main goal is to nurture that critical thinking uh, between students to come up with solutions. Some of you might have thought, how do you oppose this? How do you propose this? Well, I think you're getting your answers as we move. You see now we have brilliant minds amongst us in our counties, in this great county of ours. So the reason why we normally support these initiatives is because if we don't do it, then who will do it for us? So it is up to us and we are giving this challenge to those who finished schools, 
from not only these four brilliant schools, but schools across the county to give back to the community, to inspire these great minds, to support them in whatever they are doing. We also like to thank uh, the county government for ensuring that secondary schools in Mandera are free. I know that is not uh, a, a, an easy task. So kudos to our county government. I think we can give them a round of applause to His Excellency the Governor and his government for ensuring that our, 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 our kids, our, our, our fathers and mothers at home do not stress as we come here to, 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 as, as we come here to, to learn.